Hello, and uh, welcome back. My name is Matt Samudio, and this is episode four in my series of videos on Slackware Linux. Now, just to recap a little bit, uh, what I'd like to try to do with this series of videos is really focus on kind of the Unix-like uh, uh, sensibilities and Unix-like operating environments. And uh, I believe Slackware uh, ties into that very well, as, as I've mentioned before. Um, Slackware uh, Linux itself is first and foremost um, in its intention a, uh, an attempt to provide a Unix-like experience on the PC. And Slackware in particular is uh, I guess for lack of a better way to say it, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, the most Unix-like of Linux distributions. At least uh, Slackware's intent, the people that create and maintain Slackware, their intent is pretty much to try to stick to, uh, um, you know, providing that Unix-like experience in the Linux world. So, uh, um, an another theme that I'm, that I'm hoping to keep going through this series of videos is um, perhaps a little bit different than, uh, than we might find uh, other people doing videos on these topics, uh, a theme of how much can be done with very little. So uh, this episode, um, I'm going to talk about uh, Notion, which is a, a window manager for X. And uh, I, I've, I've talked about Notion a bit in, a, in some earlier videos. I think I kind of fell short a little bit um, in, in uh, the quality of my presentation. So hoping to take a little bit of a better cut at it here. Also with some, some additional context. So um, the, the kind of the theme for this episode, uh, fitting it in with the overall theme of the series, is... Um, I'm going to explore a little bit of, um, you know, I guess what I consider a little bit of a different way to approach general usage of your um, computing environment, and in particular, uh, your your desktop. So, um, and I believe Notion is is one such interesting option. So, uh, I want to talk a little. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and do a superficial overview of Notion. Quick, here's the Notion website. Um, pretty pretty simple and straightforward. Um, Notion is a very um, lean and small window manager, and it is a tiling window manager. Um, and actually, the the website here calls it out pretty well. It's a tiling tabbed window manager. So uh, just a quick little, to just kind of give you an idea what it's about. I'm, I'm actually running Notion here too, so you'll be able to see some of this firsthand. So um, first off, it's a tiling window manager. So the screen is divided into non-overlapping tiles. So these are all, you know, these, these things are tiles. They don't overlap, so there's no, um, you, know, pushing when, you know, pushing tiles in front of each other or anything like that. Um, in uh, inside a tile, a tile may contain multiple windows, and if a tile does contain multiple windows, then you get a tabbed type of operation. And so I, I can show that right here. So this tile here has two things running, you know, basically two, uh, for lack of a better term, we'll call them windows. But uh, in this uh, um, type of desktop experience, you don't really get windows. You get these tiles and then something in the tile and then you can tab between the multiple things okay so it's a uh, tiling and then in the tiles they're tabbed so um, a, a key concept here is that uh, th there's kind of a static approach going on here so and again the website says it probably better than I can most tiled window managers are dynamic meaning that they automatically resize and move around the tiles kind of like windows as things appear and disappear on your screen notion by contrast does not automatically change the tiling you are in complete control okay so to demonstrate that um, 
and I don't want to get into other tiling uh, window managers. There are some other ones, but uh, the Notion website said it really good right here. When you open new things in in a lot of these other tiling window managers, they will like find a spot in the screen to put the new thing, and then they will shuffle and shift all the tiles accordingly to try to make that fit. Notion does something that I prefer much, much better. And that's if, like, let's say I'm going to open up a new terminal. It opens it up in the current tile, and it's simply a tabbed thing that it didn't change. My layout, it didn't change anything. Okay? And if I get rid of it, oops, if I get rid of it, it's gone. It still didn't change anything. So what that means is that, that the layout of tiles on this screen, or um, I guess they call it a... Uh, a workspace, okay? So, um, and you get multiple workspaces too. I'll show that in a second. But um, the the layout of tiles is relatively static. It it doesn't change unless you want to change it. So, for instance, I got these two tiles here. If I want to make this one shorter, this one's taller. If I want to change that, I can grab, kind of grab over here with the mouse, and I could change that tiling, right? Or the, that that layout. Part and I can do that at at all of the borders of the titles of all the tiles, so I I'm in control. I can change it, but uh, if I don't want it to change, it's static. the The window manager isn't doing a bunch of stuff for me. Now this control I th I find to be pretty awesome because uh, um, what it does is it 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 really really maximizes this this uh, concept of um, you know, and this is one of what I think is one of the primary strengths of this particular uh, desktop uh, experience is it, it almost eliminates my my you know my concern over where things are placed in the screen, and I, I get rid of a lot of the uh, shuffling and moving around of things. I basically settle on a layout that I like, and I just keep plopping stuff into the same spots, and then I can easily switch you know, in, in the slots like this. So now I, I actually have some keyboard shortcuts. Um, Notion is very configurable. So um, I have some uh, keyboard shortcuts like uh, my control up and down arrow changes tab. So, I, you know, I don't have to futz around with uh, the mouse changing tabs if I don't want to. Um, you can see how nice fast that is. Okay. Uh, Another shortcut I have is control left and right arrow. Um, that changes workspace. And so um, I haven't talked about workspaces yet. So a workspace is kind of like a, a virtual screen. So this is one workspace that I've showed here. I'm going to control right arrow over, and here's another workspace. It's got a, it's got a different uh, tiling layout. There's my other workspace. Here's a different, yet a different one. This is a workspace that has one huge tile. So basically, it's like a full screen uh, tile. Um, and I can have one of those. Here's yet another one. Uh, three basic tiles here. So and and really, you know, here's even another one horizontally. I can, uh, you know. Actually, I should have did that in reverse. Should put the uh, big one there. Oops. Yeah, I have a small one there. Whatever, you know, I can put whatever I want in them. So, um, you know, virtual workspaces, a, a separate uh, tile layout for each one. And what I've found is that when I when I kind of get the tiles laid out the wa the way I like them, I never I never change it. I, I have a few, you know, a handful of screens that for kind of different uh, working modes or whatever, and it, it's it's actually really easy to create a new one, and I can lay out a new tile layout anytime I want. But for the most part, I have pretty much eliminated all that that constant tedious activity of selecting windows, moving them around, shuffling them in be behind each other, you know, trying to you know basically that whole deal so and that that's ki i think that's really kind of what the purpose is for a, win a window manager with this approach now that there you'll notice there is a thing where um i have mine configured where um 
I moved the mouse to select the active tile. Um, and, and that was a choice I made. Um, and I have it set so I, I don't have to click anything. I just move the mouse into the tile that I want selected. And it selects it. Um, and that's just something that I happen to like to do. Um, it is possible to have uh, keystrokes assigned to like, so you know, rotate around the tiles, and you can you can do all your selections and stuff with keystrokes. Um, I just I just happen to like this one little compromise with the mouse. So, but it, it would be up to whoever you know, up to you. Um, so there's that. So that, that's kind of a, a basic overview of of Notion and the alternative that it gives you in terms of, uh, I mean, it's kind of a totally different way of using your desktop. Now, I want to start getting into some, um, um, just kind of a, maybe a little bit of, uh, just some thoughts on why this is uh, kind of nice, um, and also some, how, how, some of the implications into other areas of, you know, what we might consider when we're thinking about how we use our computers. So, uh, let's see. So, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, X Windows or X, as we call it, um, or as it's called. Uh, so, I, I I already talked previously about um, kind of the nature of how one kind of has to look at the difference between something like Windows and something like the Unix-like environments if you're going to try to do any kind of comparison. Um, there, there's lots of, uh, lots of difference that needs to be taken into account when you're, when you're considering that kind of stuff. So um, I, th this is going to kind of touch on some of that difference. So um, I, I also already talked about how um, in the Unix-like experience, we're, we're very much uh, not um, focusing on graphics, and by extension of that, we're, we're not uh, the the graphical desktop environment is is not like intrinsic or native to the Unix experience. It's it's kind of an optional thing, um, and in some way, it's kind of like a an afterthought or whatever. Um, now that doesn't mean that it's it it it's poorly done or that it's in any way inferior. It it's more the opposite, where the the Unix and uh, Unix like environment is so uh, down to its core, so flexible and you know kind of its design is so elegant, and especially in terms of kind of really effective at keeping things as simple as as they can be. Um, the, there, there's no need for a graphical environment to start out with, and it's plenty easy to just add a graphical environment. So, where and to contrast that, if you look at kind of the Windows um, experience, uh, it, Windows definitely focuses on the graphical orient orientation of of its user experience, and there's certainly no way um, to separate out. You could all, I mean, I would almost say that the Windows experience is dependent on uh, how the the graphics is done in Windows, and and there's there's really very little choice um, about that graphical in experience in the Windows environment, um, and, and part of that is is due to the fact that Microsoft uh, has has really um, determined so much of that graphical experience and and they've you know it, it it's propagated throughout their whole the whole conception of how their system works that uh, you know they're it's you know that's what they're delivering with Windows and that's what you get and there's I mean there are some options for changing certain parts of it and stuff but very little compared to the choice that you get in the Unix world or Unix like world so um, uh, to kind of uh, elaborate on that a little bit, I'd actually like to talk a little bit about um, kind of like the uh, the well, I don't really want to call it architecture because we're not going to get into the API designs or anything, but re really more kind of like the um, the conceptual design of how X fits in 
the into the Unix like environment. So th this is actually kind of a, a neat little picture I found um, in some documentation on uh, actual uh, gra uh, graphics device driver um, design and implementation. So, but uh, you know, uh, it starts out with a really nice introduction about X and and everything. So. Uh, here, here's X, where X sits, and and historically, the the significance of X is that it's it's really kind of the the de facto. Uh, I don't want to call it call it a standard, although there are there are certainly aspects of a standard around it. But really, what it is is it's what really where the focal point of where the Unix-like environments uh, kind of gravitated towards. Um, providing a, a, a graphical desktop experience for the Unix-like environments, everybody's efforts kind of, you know, gravitated together around X. So X is kind of the central, centrally chosen uh, solution. Um, and, and I think it's worth noting that that X is. Um, I forgot to bring my video over here. So here, here's another aspect of Notion. Um, if you want to move a tile or what's it, you know, one of the things that's in a tile to a different tile, you, you do this right click and you do toggle tag and then I can, I can go any, anywhere I want and put that, I could do attach tagged. Oops, I tagged the wrong one. Let me move that back. Attach tagged. This is actually the one I want to tag. Toggle tag. I'm going to bring this one over. So now I'm Maybe maybe you might prefer it if the video wasn't here, so you didn't have to look at me. But <laughs> oh well, <laughs> my video. So anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, th th this is. Uh, yeah, I don't want to really get into too much, uh, you know, design-wise about Unix, but suffice it to say that. Yeah, you know, we have these divisions. There's user space, which is where all normal processes that run as some kind of user, and there's a there's a there's an amount of process isolation between um, both individual processes, regardless of who's running them. You know, a process kind of has its own space, and then there's even more isolation between the processes of a particular user from the processes of other users. Um, and a lot of that isolation has to do with user-based um, permission, um, either of file, file system access, um, or stuff like that. So, um, so there's user space, and and what's significant about user space is this is where these are normal processes that follow all of the, uh, you know, it, it's like. Um, Everything's pretty. Anything that runs here is pretty much this has to follow the same rules and has the same mechanics, in general, in terms of the operating system itself. So um, outside of user space or underneath user space, however you want to think of that, there's what's called kernel space, and this is this is where um, uh, you know it. This is where um, code is executed that needs kind of special consideration. And usually it's in terms of actual um, internal operating system operation. So um, the kernel itself is has executing code and it's that it's doing things like making decisions about actual scheduling of what processes get the CPU. It does memory management. It does all sorts of cool internal stuff that that normal processes that are running normal programs at a user type level they don't want you know they they're not capable of and they don't want to be concerned with those things. They rely on the operating system to do that for them. So. And, and the mechanics of how that stuff is being done has to be centralized. There has to be kind of a master making those decisions, and it's the kernel that does that. And then also in that same space, there's the, the device drivers that interact with hardware. And again, hardware has that same uh, aspect, well, as the CPU and memory have in the normal 
you know, execution of processes, that there's special considerations about managing the CPU and memory. The same kind of considerations are there for other kinds of hardware. And graphics, you know, the graphics card uh, just, you know, fits right into that slot. So that that's uh, very relevant for what we're talking about. And it's, the diagram here shows, here's the graphics hardware, here's the kernel space, which has all the kernel stuff, and you'll see this DRM here. That's actually a kernel module. And why this is important is that kern the kernel actually has a, a fairly stable set of interfaces, basically a, a, an understanding for modules in general. This is what modules are expected to, to do to operate and how they're supposed to behave at a very general sense and allows the kernel, um, you know, to uh, the kernel and the device drivers to, to interact and accomplish whatever needs to, you know, and they're very comprehensive and generalized so that, uh, you know, they, they can cover uh, the kernel and the device drivers. There's plenty of um, flexibility for them to implement things uh, however they need to. Um, so that, that well understood and well guarded set of interfaces between kernel modules and the kernel, this DRM module conforms to that. So it's, in, in, from a certain perspective, there's nothing special or different in terms of the operating system about this particular module. So it, it, to contrast that with Windows, um, the graphics, the implementation of graphics in Windows is so pervase and so the, the, the uh, um, implications of those graphics are, the, the assumptions are propagated throughout the operating system. And certainly there's a device driver for your graphics card, but, but it's, its behavior and its design the, the, how, gra how Windows deals with graphics is not isolated to just that. There's a, uh, the concerns over graphics and even some of the mechanics of how graphics end up having to be executed, it, it's pervasive through more of the operating system. So in that respect, in the Unix-like world, it's, it, it's a better encapsulation of the graphics concerns. So. If you don't want graphics, this module doesn't need to get loaded, really. And, and Xorg and all of this stuff can go away, and you can still use the operating system. Can't do that with Windows. So um, you have this module. Um, Xorg sits up here in user land. So this is where all, basically all the desktop you know, environment and you know, basically all the graphics is, is, is really being done. Um, Th this is, and, and this is uh, kind of the heavy lifting for the, all the um, user interface type constructs, like things like a window and a mouse pointer and all those kind of things are, the, the way those are programmatically managed is all in Xorg, which lives in user space, which is where it should be. Um, and then when it needs to write to graphics hardware, it ends up going down through this module, which, you know, arbitrates and basically, um, you know, it, I mean, it's just a real modular type of uh, interaction. So that's a, from a software engineering standpoint, that's a very good thing. Um, and you can see up here, uh, so any X11 application, so basically any program with a GUI is going to either be an X application or it could potentially be an OpenGL application. And OpenGL is significant because it does, it's able to leverage, and, and OpenGL is a, um, a standard for 3D acceleration. Um, and there's a whole bunch of 2D acceleration implied in there too. So some 2D acceleration can be accomplished by using the OpenGL stuff, and, and I, I believe a lot of software actually does that. But regardless, OpenGL's purpose in life is for graphics acceleration and in particular focusing on 3D type stuff. So, um, and, and there's a lot of uh, software that uses OpenGL to great effect and that goes, actually goes through Xorg and there's, there's a special layer here that shares some 
design interaction across the board here um, that that helps X you know effectively leverage everything um, implied in that OpenGL standard. Um, but but your application doesn't have to be OpenGL; it can be just plain X, and that goes through the same thing here, and you end up with a simpler 2D uh, equivalent of the OpenGL, and then all of this ends up using the DRM kernel module to, ex to, to accomplish the lower level interaction with graphics hardware. So very layered, very modular, um, and again, all completely optional. <laughs> so we don't need graphics to use the Unix operating system, but uh, we can't. We have the option. And this stuff all fits in design-wise and concept-wise very well into the Unix-like uh, sensibilities. Um, and, and again, just to, just to kind of call out again, uh, primary in those sensibilities is that um, every, everything is supposed to try to minimize its, it, its scope or focus um, in order to do the best that it can at at whatever its focus is. So, um, you know, the, the notion is, is basically that um, the more you have to do, uh, the more difficult it is to do it well. So, um, now, I, I think it's hard to say that X uh, doesn't, you know, that X is small in its focus uh, overall, but in terms of what it's accomplishing, graphics, um, it, it's, it's really contain. I mean, it, it contains itself to s really just that. And, 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 and even more so each one of these components in, in the layers, um, you know, so the DRM module, its focus is way smaller than the overall, you know, stack here. So because DRM keeps its focus really small, it's able to do what it does so much better. And the same thing goes with, say, for instance, the 2D driver. It doesn't have to concern itself with anything OpenGL related or even anything 3D related. It narrows its focus to just that, and so it is so much more able to do it so much better. You know, even the same thing with Xorg itself. You know, it doesn't concern itself with all the low-level hardware details that DRM takes care of. It only concerns itself with that the stuff that's in that you know contained in that uh, topic or area of you know desktop uh, drawable you know things that are drawn so windows blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing that's a part of X is uh, and I want to get into this a little bit too is um, the built and the. I can't overstate the value of this. I mean, I just think it's super, super cool about X. X actually has in its architecture, in its design, really mostly in this part of X. It has built-in remote display, seamless, transparent remote display of any window. So you don't have to have a separate desktop sharing solution which which like sits on top of something and whatever you, x x applications natively um, are are you know uh, remote displayable seamlessly without I mean the the application itself doesn't even have to know what's running over the network um, and it can display just its own window over the network this is just immensely cool and very very powerful and I'm I'm actually going to show that probably the one of the next things here that I should show. So I'm going to flip back over to here. And um, let's look at my agenda a second here. So I've talked plenty about X and how it fits into the Unix sensibilities. Um, okay, so uh, with the Windows experience, um, you really kind of, I mean, what you get in terms of what the basic operating environment provides for you, you have very little choice, and, and there's very little change in that. You have a start menu, you know, and you have, there's a whole bunch of, yeah, you know, and, and certainly some of the features are neat, but there's a whole bunch of features and things that you, you basically are expected to do 
to accomplish things, and and it's fairly static in, in Windows. You're not going to be changing it or making a lot of choices about it. I mean, if you want to copy files around, you use that file manager and very little choice about that. Um, you could go to a dash or a, a command prompt, but the let's face it, the, the copy program in, in Windows terminal environment is you know pretty, uh, pretty spartan. And uh, the terminal in general in Windows simply just doesn't have uh, much facility for actually general use. It's more of a, you know, a, a thing where um, you know, th th there's a, a certain class of tasks that there's really no other way to do it other than in a terminal, and that and so it's there as that option. But it's it's not considered a primary uh, way to actually use the operating environment, um, and and it correspondingly is missing a lot of uh, you know most of the kind of things you would need in order to use the system from a from a terminal in any real meaningful way so um, that was a really long drawn-out way of saying uh, you know in Windows you're using the graphical desktop environment and the basic or the the there's kind of an underlying core of that desktop environment that's static, and you're not going to be changing it. You're going to use it the way Microsoft set it up for you, and that's it. So with in the Unix-like environment, I wanted to show like one example of the kinds of choices that you have. I can actually use my desktop environment by choosing this window manager, this tiling tabbed window manager. I can use my desktop environment quite differently than I might otherwise with a with a different desktop environment. So um, one of the things uh, that that I really like about Notion in terms of what it means uh, for how I use my environment is it's it really lends itself very well to to a really heterogeneous mix of terminal based uh, programs and terminal based uh, activity and graphical um, activity. And what's even even more is that uh, I happen to be, you know, my sensibilities happen to be around. I, I'm not really that fond of of the way graphical programs work. Um, I find them uh, cumbersome, sometimes very limiting and, and hampering. And uh, I I even don't necessarily like to use the mouse that much. Uh, and I I very very much appreciate a lot of the power that comes from terminal oriented programs. And 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 not the least of which is the fact that um, terminal programs tend to be again transparently uh, capable uh, over ne you know network or, or remotely or not locally. So if if I run let's say a terminal and it's running on a remote machine, I see very little difference than a terminal that I'm running locally. For one thing, since it's all text, there's hardly any uh, network bandwidth that's needed for operation of that program. So it's just blazing fast, even if it's over the network. Uh, um, and, and in fact, the, the interface itself, so I mean, let me just, uh, let me just show an example. So um, I use a text, made, text mode or a terminal-based email client called MUT, and I mean, this is actually running remotely on a different machine, but I mean, look at it scroll. I mean, you can't get a GUI program to scroll that fast. And, you know, I mean, it just, the speed and responsiveness to my keystrokes, uh, because it's text mode and because there's so little going over the network in order to, for the, you know, the terminal just needs my keystrokes. That's it. And when it, when it, when it's sending feedback to me, it's simply just a, a bit of text that, that, you know, gets displayed on the screen. So, I mean, it's super lean, super fast, no matter where I'm actually running it. Um, and I really like that speed. Um, and, and again, it runs exactly the same uh, whether I'm doing it here or on a different machine. Or if I'm somewhere else and I'm coming over the Internet, logged into my server, and running my programs, they're just exactly running the same as if I was here. Uh, so uh, I just I just really like that. Um, 
so I, I get I get a real homogenous. So again, just to reiterate, I myself prefer lots of terminal terminal oriented activity and usage, and and Notion lends itself really well to. Um, you know, really mixing up, having lots of terminals, and then, of course, you need some graphics. I mean, it's really hard to get by in the in the computer, uh, using a computer these days without having a web browser. So, and of course, I've got a web browser, and uh, believe me, I've tried, uh, you know, exploring what it would take to get by with a text mode browser. It just, I mean, you hit the wall really fast. I mean, you know. You pretty much need a web browser. Um, so, even if you were going to eschew any other graphical program, you would pretty much, for sure, need to compromise and say, "Well, I still need to use a web browser." So, um, but being able to to have this heterogeneous mix of you have all the text mode programs I want or terminal programs I want, mixed with seamlessly and nicely and easily usable with my uh, with my graphical programs. Um, it's just you know, it's just a joy uh, to use it. So, um, just a, a, another quick little uh, cruise around here. So, you know, here's another example. I've got uh, a text mode um, kind of system resource monitoring program down here. I've got some other dumb little window here where you know maybe I'm watching the output of some program. I've got a nice little picture viewer here. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, I've got a little file manager program over here, and again, to to kind of reiterate here, um, this file manager program isn't built into anything in particular. I don't have to have it. I j I happen to choose it and install it. It's called XFE, and it's real basic. And it's also very lean and very fast. Um, so if I want that, I can have it, and I can also, you know, have my terminal right next to it, and. Uh, the, t the tiled tabbed strategy for managing the location and interaction with these windows lends itself really well to mixing and matching all these different kinds of windows. So, oh, let me go back and tag this. Toggle tag. Bring you back over here with me. All right. So, uh, talking about X a little bit, just want to um, just kind of show a little bit of this uh, kind of how neat X is. So I've got a server in another room. It's, its name is Spirit. I can SSH to Spirit. Okay, if I do this command here, it's going to show me the, the list of processes running that I have running on Spirit. And you can see I got all this kind of stuff here. I wanted to just call out this one here. This is a VNC service. Um, and this is the TWM window manager that's actually the window manager running for the desktop, provide the graphical desktop provided by that VNC instance. Now, in uh, the Unix-like environments, VNC uses this concept of a display number. And so there isn't just one remote desktop for for a Unix like server running VNC. There could be as many as you want. And each one is basically just like a regular X desktop. It's a process, a normal user land process that runs as a particular user and it runs a window manager and it you have a desktop. And like I said, I, I any particular user can run as many of those as they want, um, as well as multiple users. Each user, you know, users. So, uh, so a, a VNC desktop is particular to the user, and it's also particular to a session for that user. So, you, uh, you know, each user can have their own desktops, and each user can have multiple desktops for themselves. So, and then. Everything that runs on that desktop is likewise belongs to that user. So it's, you know, like, like I have a, a desktop running Notion here. It's running as me. So let, let me actually show that. Um, so I'm, 
this this is another terminal locally here on on Darkstar. I can do the same thing. PS dash F U me, and you can see I have. You know, all, this is all the stuff I got running locally here. So it kind of cuts off. Um, but uh, somewhere in here, you know, Notion is actually in here. So here's my X. Yeah, it's cut off, so you can't see it. But Notion's actually running, and that's this desktop. But over on, on uh, Spirit, I have this VNC-based desktop. And it's running TWM, so a completely different desktop. So, oops, I can actually um, right. So I'm 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 actually going to connect. Uh, I'm going to view that desktop. And I'm just going to actually move this to. Attached. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So, I I just I actually purposefully sized that remote desktop to be to fit in of in this full window tile, so it looks nice and everything. But uh, so yeah, this is a desktop running on on Spirit. You know, I can I can have terminals, I can do file managers, and again, you'll notice it's TWM on that desktop. Um. And and this this remote view of that desktop it simply happens to be in a in a tile here. But um, so there's that. Now I can run a VNC locally. So coming back to Darkstar here, um, that's the that's my viewer to Spirit. I'm actually going to start. So I started a, a VNC session on Darkstar, right? So um, it's telling me I got, I, I got display number one. If there were multiple uh, desktops running here, I, I'd get whatever the next desktop was, but I, I happened to get desktop one. And then I can, uh, I can actually, uh, you know, do this. So uh, let's toggle my tag. Let's bring it up. Oh, I'm actually I'm actually on the window I wanted anyway, so I can turn it off. So here I have this. This one's actually running. This desktop is actually running on Darkstar, along with the the overall. You know, my my console desktop that's running Notion. I'm actually running a virtual desktop, and viewing it, and that's running uh, uh, TWM. Right, so, all right, uh, so I could actually have multiple desktop experiences at the same time on the same machine if I want, and then I've got. Well, I, you're, I'm sure you're all familiar with remote desktop type stuff, but the reason I brought this up is I, I want to show you something kind of interesting here. So again, just to kind of demonstrate the power of X. Uh, so here I am on Darkstar. If I start a, uh, if I start a terminal, it pops open a new window. Nothing remarkable. Now, if I SSH to Spirit, right? Now I'm now now this is on Spirit, right? So if I execute a new term, and I, I just I have a huge here because uh, I put huge on it, so I get the font big enough so you can read it. But um, if I if I execute a new term. Notice it says it can't open the display. That that's because this is just a terminal log. You know, with a shell login, with a login shell on Spirit, there's no graphical environment for that to hook up to. But if I if I just export a display variable, and this is kind of a standard thing that X or you know, it's it's a convention that X honors this display variable. And I give it a neat little specification. I'm basically telling it. So remember, I'm running on Spirit here now. I'm telling it the display is going to be on Darkstar, and this is you know this means that it's actually the uh, the main display that's on the actual physical console. So 
I export that display barrel. Now if I do new term huge, look at this. I get another window. Just as if I had run it on uh, locally on Darkstar. And I can actually exit here. So now this terminal here is, I was logged into Spirit, now I, I, I exited, so I'm back to Darkstar here. But this here is actually an Xterm GUI, you know, a graphical program. And Xterm's purpose is to, you know, have a window, a graphical window in the graphical environment. But what's in the window is, is the operation of a terminal. That's what Xterm's purpose is. So it's actually a GUI program. It's just that inside that GUI program, it's just a terminal. So, so what I did, so what I've got here is, I can set the title here. This is actually running on Spirit, but displaying on Darkstar. So, and now because this this program running on Spirit has its display all hooked up to Darkstar, any GUI program I run here is going to display here as well. So I can run. Um, or here, let's run XFE, the file manager. See, now I get a new window, and my file manager, this file manager, you know, we got to remember, this is actually on Spirit. All these files are on Spirit. I mean, look how fast it is. You know, and, and I didn't have to share the desktop. You know, I'm not viewing a shared desktop here. Let me demonstrate that. So I'm going to move this to one of my tiled areas. You know, let's, let's move it here. Attach tagged. So the, here's, here's my file manager mixed in with all my graphical programs that I'm running on this computer. This, this, this is actually running on Spirit, but it's displaying just its own window right here, just as if it was a local program, just like all the other local programs. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if my description of this is, is kind of repetitive or whatever. It's kind of hard to get across how powerful this is, but hopefully I'm able to kind of make it clear here um, how cool this is. I mean, and this is just, you know, built into the, at the architectural level of X Windows. So there's that. Now, uh, I just want the reason I brought up these things here, uh, this works for remote, for, you know, any, dis any X display. So these VNC desktops are actual X displays. They just happen to be, you know, virtual and in memory. And then the, the VNC software itself has the capability to take that virtual desktop that's in memory and then, dis, you know, display it on a remote display through X. So that's how this whole thing is designed. It's basically really leveraging very heavily, you know, the whole architectural concepts of X itself. So... I don't have to, this desktop here is, well, let's go to Spirit. So this desktop here is actually running on Spirit, and I'm using a remote viewer, a desktop viewer, to view that desktop. So the, the Type VNC viewer is actually running locally on Darkstar, and that's why it's in a tile like this. So th this is running in, on Darkstar. But the desktop itself, so when I start this terminal, that, that terminal is displaying on that VNC desktop, which is actually running on Spirit. So this is running on Spirit. Now, if I, so I'm, I'm on Spirit, if I SSH to Darkstar, right, and then I do my little display trick, but I'm going to export the display to Spirit, and display number one. So if, you know, hopefully we can remember that um, when I had this, when I looked at this uh, VNC desktop, looked at the process, it showed that it was display number one. That's how I know, that's how I know that. So I'm going to export my display like that. And then and then, you know, then I can uh, I could actually exit out of that. So, I, so um, you know, why? What does this mean? I mean, why is this cool? Well, here we have <laughs> this whole desktop here is running on Spirit. This is a, an X term and a terminal, you know, terminal session on Spirit. But I logged in 
to Darkstar, export my display, and ran another new term on Darkstar that is now actually displaying on that remote desktop on Spirit. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like this uh, double reverse kind of thing. But, but, you know, it just shows the power and flexibility here, I think. So I can actually exit this viewer, right? And then I can come back and say, oh, I want to go back to that viewer. You know, I want to I look at that remote desktop again. And so I can uh, VNC viewer, spirit one, enter my password. And lo and behold, it's still there. Um, and furthermore, I could actually uh, log out of my desktop. In fact, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm recording the desktop. But I could actually log out of my desktop here on Darkstar and leave, you know, go downstairs and, and log in on another computer, open up a viewer to this, this desktop on Spirit and see this exact thing. And the, again, this shell here is running on Darkstar. So I can interact with the, the desktop on Spirit, and I can also interact seamlessly and transparently with programs on other servers or other computers that are remote displaying onto that desktop on Spirit. So this is the kind of you know power and flexibility that I wanted to show. Hopefully that's clear. I'm s certainly willing to answer any questions or do more demonstrations on how this works and why it's it's uh, cool and, and powerful, but um, I, I, I really did just want to show that. So, okay, so I'm gonna close this. Uh, you know, I could do the same thing likewise here too. So, but I, I don't need to show that anymore. So, close that. Here's my thing here. Uh, let's bring my toggle a tag move my little script back over here and we'll we'll uh, settle on this work uh, work what do they call that again workspace for for a little bit um, so the next thing I wanted to show is uh, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, you know I, I'm, I'm retaining a lot of uh, you know, terminal-oriented activity, and basically in my patterns of usage, I'm using the terminal a lot. So, um, you know, I'm actually going to save my next uh, section of the stuff I want to talk about for my next uh, episode. But uh, just as a little preview, um, because um, so so kind of in keeping with the direction I'm going here, which is that you know I'm 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 exploring. Uh, the alternate way to use your environment um, and so I've got a heterogeneous mix of graphics and terminal kind of leaning a little more heavily on the terminal side of things I'm going to show start showing a little bit around you know what it is uh, you know the benefits that are enjoyed from allowing yourself to, to retain all this terminal stuff in your habits and in your uh, in your desktop environment. And the whole idea here is the, the reason, again, the reason why I consider this particular approach to the desktop environment to be uh, um, to my liking is because it, it, it makes it real easy and it, it's very conducive to me keeping all these terminal-based habits uh, and, and sensibilities, um, you know, keep it going in, in my... Uh, how I do things. So um, I think that uh, this video is longer than I intended, and I think this is plenty for one video. So uh, I guess um, I'll call it uh, call it a day here. And again, as a preview for my next episode, I'm going to get into some um, more exploration of using this kind of neat alternative for a working environment, and in particular, getting into some of the the things that that I like about keeping the the terminal uh, active and and kind of in the forefront in how I'm using the computer. So, 
hopefully that's exciting to everyone. And um, I really thank you all for uh, tuning in, listening, and watching. And I also wanted to make uh, do a little quick shout out to um, the people that have made some comments and asked some questions on my videos. Uh, really appreciate uh, how gracious and, and uh, um, insightful everyone is. Um, I'm certainly hoping that I can um, provide uh, good information and clarification and all that kind of stuff. Please feel free to make comments and ask me questions. Um, so we'll see you next time. And uh, that's all for now. <laughs>